Hello Horror Hounds, welcome back to Povember. We've looked at two versions of The Pit and the Pendulum, uh, The Tomb of Ligeia and Vincent Price in An Evening of Edgar Allan Poe. And now for something, as Monty Python said, da 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 da. We don't believe in guilty pleasures here at the Horror House. If you like something, you like it. And that's fine. There's no need to feel guilty about it unless it's something like, I don't know, the KKK, in which case you should be fucking ashamed of yourself. But today's offering, The Raven, starring John Cusack as Edgar Allan Poe from 2012, comes probably just about as close to a guilty pleasure as I would care to admit. Um, I re-watched it over the weekend and, gee, you know, bugger me if I didn't actually really enjoy it. I'm not here to tell you that this is a good movie. It's not. I'm not here to tell you as someone who, let me choose the right word here, reveres, reveres the work of Edgar Allan Poe. I'm not here to tell you that this is in any way indicative of the life or works of the great man whatsoever. Um, it is what, <laughs> I guess it's what we would call a romp. It's this, this is a leave your brain at the door kind of movie. This is a Sunday afternoon hangover movie that's very pretty to look at that trots along at a fair old clip, doesn't give you time to realise how ridiculous it is, is all froth, nonsense and no substance. <sighs> and yet, I don't know, it just makes me, it makes me smile. Do I watch it time and time? Will I watch this again and again and again and again? Absolutely not. Do I wish that there was a biopic, a decent film out there about Ed Graham Poe. My God, yes, because there are moments, there are flashes in this where you could see, you could, you could see through the frosted shop window like Tiny Tim on Christmas Eve shivering outside the delights beyond the glass of what could be, you know, the nice things that maybe one day we might have if someone decides to do a really decent film about a fascinating, multifaceted, literary genius. Until then, from the director of V for Vendetta, which is a genuinely underappreciated movie. I actually think V for Vendetta is, is genuinely good. Uh, and this is coming from someone who really likes the Alan Moore source material. Yes, I know they changed it up. I don't give a fuck. I like what they did with it. <laughs> We're not talking about FIFA Vendetta. We're talking about The Raven. Where's your train of thought, Andrew? There it is. It's left the station. Try and catch it. What we get here instead is, <clears throat> is John Cusack playing uh, Edgar Allan Poe, caught up in a murder mystery whereby uh, the killer takes as his inspiration uh, the murders from the works of Poe himself, leaving Poe, as the film says, uh, uniquely positioned to offer an insight into the mind of the killer. So good old Eddie tags along with Luke Evans, detective, inspector, I forget what's his name, I've even forgotten his rank, detective, inspector, gruffy, muck, frown, disapprove has to team up with Poe, who he frowningly disapproves of. Um, uh, and then the stakes get upped uh, when the killer uh, kidnaps Poe's uh, betrothed, uh, his fiancée, and she will die unless he can solve the clues left on the bodies at each murder site. It sounds a little bit like Seven, doesn't it? It's not as good. Uh, there are parts of it which seem a little bit like Saw, but that's maybe just because Saw 5 just wholesale takes the pit and the pendulum uh, for its opening opening kill, I think. 
in Saw 5, I think. Um, it's not really like Saw. It, it feels a little bit like From Hell in that it's very gorgeous and very kinetic and plays so fast and loose with historical facts that it feels a little bit like a Disney ride. <laughs> From Hell is, is sort of like... If they scrapped the Pirates of the Caribbean ride and did a Jack the Ripper ride, From Hell would feel a bit like that. And just as if uh, 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 they scrapped the Haunted Mansion and did an Edgar Allan Poe ride, it, I think it would feel something like The Raven. Although uh, Disney's Edgar Allan Poe ride would probably be more historically accurate uh, than The Raven, but possibly less fun. Look, here's the major problem with the film. The... The murder mystery aspect of it, the follow the clues uh, purpose uh, of the story doesn't really make sense. It's, it's, it's one of these films where you just have to accept that this uh, psychotic murderous uh, villain is uh, so technically adept and must have some kind of spreadsheet merged with a crystal ball to ensure that everyone is where they need them to be at exactly the right times to follow the clues and then discover the red herrings and yada 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 that it's it it's all it, it's all really nonsense these kind of things usually live or die by the reveal of the killer uh, one of the great joys of the scream movies is that you can like an agatha christie type movie you can spend the duration of the film picking out your likely suspects um, there's there's none of that here you will be forgiven I promise you when uh, when St. Peter greets you at the pearly gates once once you've moved on and you confess that uh, when the killer in uh, the 2012 movie The Raven starring John Cusack as Edgar Allan Poe what a sentence. You will be forgiven when you tell St. Peter at the pearly gates that when the killer was revealed at the end of that movie, you didn't really remember his character. St. Peter will look at you with a benevolent smile and say, I know my son. No one did. Enter freely. Eternity is yours. What we do have are flashes, moments, where I do think that Kuzak, miscast as he may well be, uh, there is information out there that suggests that Robert Downey Jr. Uh, was, was the top pick. And I think Downey would have brought a much more of a melancholy, especially in the eyes to the role, that I think Poe requires. Um, but there are flashes, there are moments when Kuzak, I think captures the essence of what I believe Poe may have been like. There's no shying away from the alcoholism in this. There is no shying away from the fact that even though he wasn't really that fated, apart from as the author of The Raven, in his own lifetime, he, to be charitable, knew his own worth. Uh, at the time, people would probably have seen that as him having an overinflated sense of his self-worth, especially when compared to his peers or those that he would he, he sees referred to as his peers that he recognises as his inferiors. Um, it adopts not just Poe the poet and Poe the writer of these grand guignol uh, short little horror exercises in uh, psychological torment but also recognises Poe as the critic. It, in his day, he was more well known, A, as the author of uh, The Raven, and B, as the literary critic with the sharpest tongue. I believe his nickname was Tomahawk because he could cut you down just with the sharp edge of his tongue. That's on show here. What that gives is a flawed and fragile hero with a huge ego and a willingness, uh, even a compulsion, to call out the shortcomings in all 
people around him. It makes for some great put downs. It makes for some great asides. Some of this is really funny. Personal taste, and I don't know whether this would be historically accurate. I would love my Poe to have just had a t even just a tinge of a southern accent. I have no idea how historically accurate that is. This is just a little personal foible of, of mine. Um, this film doesn't really know what it wants to be. If it wants to, if it wants to be historically accurate, it throws in tons of little Easter eggs and historical facts and nods and allusions to Poe's work that fans of the man will pick up on while simultaneously being aghast that, that they're in this fucking movie. Uh, and people who don't know really won't care. Most of the facts about Poe are actually just put into characters' mouths, almost as if someone's done sort of a Wikipedia search of, of Poe. I'm sure the research was a little bit more in depth than that. But he'll have a conversation with someone where he'll just drop in that uh, he was at West Point Military Academy. Um, someone flat out asks him how much he got paid for the Raven, uh, to which he replies $9, which is true and criminal. And surely with the character of Poe, he is much more likely to bring this up almost apropos nothing than to just have someone say to him, how much did you get paid for the Raven? Nine dollars. So all these historical things that you're, you're told, characters tell other characters about the tragedy in his life and, and, and how he is. There's a lovely line, God gave him a spark of genius and drenched it in grief. Wonderful. Show us that. Don't have one character say that to another. Let us discover Poe, but there's no real time for that because we all have to rush around from one murder scene uh, to the next and try and solve each clue, uh, which each clue is really another excuse for uh, Poe to just divulge another little historical piece of information about him. Either do a historical film about Poe or do a film where the killer is inspired by Poe and commits uh, murders based on him. This mushing together of the two sort of tries to be uh, all things to all people and I think satisfies none. The other drawback to it uh, is that where it's a sort of police procedural, we come upon the crime scenes after the event. We follow the police investigation apart from the pit and the pendulum uh, murder because you just you can't not uh, and there's a moment where someone who is buried alive is there's a there's a hole in in the coffin lid and the dirt's cleared away and she has a conversation with her kidnapper slash you know would-be killer and he puts his his mouth up uh to the hole and then his eye uh, and it just made me think of Argento and it made me think what would <sighs> without uh, restrictions uh, uh, an 80s or 70s Italian uh, Gormeister have done with the works of Poe as a basis for a series of murders um, so it's fun, it's not great. I honestly can't recommend it. It, it. it it makes me sort of like a Pavlovian response salivate at the prospect of a really good film about Poe. I mean, my God, the, the man's life is there begging for it. And the themes, symbols and imagery of the man's work clearly, as Roger Corman understands, cry out for a Freudian reading, and they're quite clearly representations of the man's mind. So you've got the look, you've got the look, you've got the feel, and you've got the tragic facts of the man's life. Do that. Um, what we will have next time, though, is an answer to at least one of those questions, what would uh, an Italian horror director have done with Poe as a subject matter. 
because uh, at least one half of the next film, Two Evil Eyes, was written and directed by Dario Argento. Uh, the other half written and directed by George A. Romero. Romero, Argento and Poe. Tune in next time. Tune in. Fucking idiot. <laughs>